What up, y'all? Welcome to another edition of What's in the Box Track. Well, y'all, <laughs> I was hoping the Lakers could pull it off in spite of the fact that LeBron didn't play. Um, I feel like it was a lot closer than a lot of people would have thought before the game started, to be fair. And there were a lot of opportunities for the Lakers to win the game. And the key here is turnovers. Let's get into the stats right now. The Lakers lose last night to the Minnesota Timberwolves, the number one team in the West and tied for number one team overall. That moves the Lakers to 15 and 14, very near 500 and 10th place overall. Definitely playing, but we're only 29 games into the season. So we still got a little bit of a ways to go. I know D'Lo is the big talk, so we'll get into D'Lo just a little bit. I'm not going to dive too deep into his numbers. You know he had a bad offensive game. But I still have some comments, and I know I might be a bit of an apologist, but this is how it's going to go. So check it out. The Lakers lose 111 to 118. The Lakers end up putting up 83 field goals to the Timberwolves 87. Again, I'm going to stop mentioning this because I know I have some new viewers, but listen, I'm very, very big on attempts, right? The more shots you get, the better chance you get to win. Remember, the Lakers are eighth in the league in pace, so they are getting up and down. But for some odd reason, they're still at the bottom of the league in shots attempted at around 84. In this game, they put up 83 shots for 49% shooting, not bad at all. The T-Wolves put up 87 shots for 48% shooting, not bad at all as well. Remember also that the Lakers are top 10, I believe number are eighth in opponent's field goal percentage. Now, let me just... Okay, I'm going to get to that in just a second. Let me run this down real quick. Three-point shooting was really bad for the Lakers. 41% uh, to 39%. The T-Wolves got up a few more. Well, not a few more. 12 more threes than the Lakers. The Lakers are still at the bottom of the league in three-point attempts at 37 on average and three-point field goal percentage at 37%. Now, listen, this is not necessarily a flaw for the Lakers. Not not necessarily. I mean, the shooting could be better, but the attempts is not a flaw for the Lakers. The Lakers are a points in the paint team. They're top five in points in the paint, which makes it really, 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 really ridiculous that they lost the points in the paint battle to the T-Wolves. And if you thought the T-Wolves were a better points in the paint team, they're actually not. They're middle of the pack, 16th overall by about five points behind the Lakers on average. So, you know, the T-Wolves are not this this dominant they are a dominant team but as far as points in the paint the Lakers are actually a little better you are missing a downhill scorer in LeBron so that does make a difference uh free throw shooting eh, a bit negligible Lakers have been better at that this year than they were last year if you go back and listen to the past episodes I was screaming about it almost all last year but let's get into the meat and potatoes of why the Lakers lost this game so let's skip all the rebounding because it wasn't too bad 40 uh uh, 38 to 40 in favor of the Timberwolves. Two more offensive rebounds. That's definitely good for the T Wolves. Second chance points. Now we're starting to get nasty. Second chance points. The Wolves beat the Lakers plus 10 in second chance points. Seven to 17. That's where you that's one place where you lost the game. But really, where you lost this game was turnovers. Now the Lakers are not a horrible turnover team. They're on average, if you if you go through your stats, you look on average. Somewhere between 14 through 16 is where you start to find a bunch of people that fluctuate throughout the season. Uh, and it, it can move you anywhere from 7 to 10 spots, depending upon how bad that turnover night was or these are, you know, a few games of turnovers are. Lakers are not a horrible turnover team. D'Angelo Russell is actually one of the better players in the league at assist to turnover ratio with about six assists to two or turnovers, so three to one. But not last night where he had four. Most of those were late. And Austin Reeves also had four on some pretty bad plays. I have some opinions on that that I'll get to in just a moment. But 18 turnovers, giving up 17 points is far too many, especially if you're going to lose your bread and butter, the paints and the points in the paint battle, when, which they lost to the, to the Wolves. Excuse me for stammering. Lost to the Wolves by 10. Wolves 50, Lakers 40. Even then, the Lakers have plenty of opportunity to win this game. They just would not take these opportunities when they came to them. And some of this, you have to credit the uh, the T-Wolves defense. I mean, the reality is they are a good defensive team, and they force the Lakers into weird, tough shots, taking actions away from, from Anthony Davis, not allowing him to catch low, using their size. All of this was great. However, the guard position, D'Angelo Russell specifically, if he did anything last night early in the game, the Lakers win that game last night. 
or they have a much better shot at winning at the very least. Here's where we have to watch the Lakers over the next couple of games. All right. You got a game against OKC coming up. That's a tough game. Then you got Boston, who is the tie for number one in the league overall, and they're practically undefeated at home. I think they might have just lost one, but I might be tripping on that. So you got some serious games coming up. Now, here's what's interesting. The Lakers are top 10 in the league in opponent field goal percentage, holding opponents to 46% shooting, which in today's league is good. <laughs> uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, not so much. But they're 20th in the league in opponent three-point um, percentage and 25th in the league in three-point attempts. So last year, a lot of the conversation on what's in the box was about the philosophy, the defensive philosophy. It's not just what you take away, it's what you allow, right? Some teams will look, if your team is smaller, like the Golden State Warriors, they may say, all right, we're going to allow them to score in the paint, if, if statistically that's true, but we're going to take away the three because you got Steph and Clay and, and a lot of great three-point shooters have come through Golden State, and it seems to elevate their three-point shooting to be around these two other players. With the Lakers, they give up the three. They're assuming that the three naturally is a lower percentage shot. They're giving it up at volume. And it's very, very difficult to beat a team who's shooting the three-pointer at volume well. The, you have to match it. You have to match it. Or you have to out-attempt the other team. Remember, like I said last episode, take 10 shots. Five of them twos, 50% shooting, 10 points. Take 10 shots. Three of them, three-pointers. 30% shooting, nine points. So look, the three-point shot does have a ton of value, and the Lakers give it up without, <laughs> like just, okay, that's what we're going to give up to the other team. Teams are shooting that shot much better and much better and much better, and we're going to see teams continue to shoot that shot better as years go by. This is a tough season for, to have that philosophy. When the Lakers are dialed in, what you'll notice is they're not giving up that three. When they're casual, they're definitely giving up that three. And against the Timberwolves, when you have two Giants, you actually might be a little more nervous about giving up that three. Now, what I'd like to see from the Lakers going forward is I need to see the guards – Austin Reeves excluded in the scoring portion. I need them to have better control of the game. If both of them, if if D'Angelo Russell and Austin Reeves could merge into one player, it would be great. I don't understand why D'Lo is not shooting at the free throw line and down. I don't know why it's either three-pointer or awkward underhand layup. I'm not sure why he's playing this way, but there's something off about how D'Lo is playing and the confidence he has to get a shot up without it getting blocked. He definitely is going to come out of this slump. I, I know that there's a lot of talk about trading him and moving him, and Kendrick Perkins, as if he was a great scorer, is talking a lot of trash, but the reality is he's going to come out of this slump. That's going to happen. So this is not who he is as a player. Now, whether you like him or not personally, and we have to admit, as Laker fans, whoever the scapegoat is often always coincides with the person who also has bad media press or has a bad image in the media. Dwight Howard, Russell Westbrook, Mike D'Antoni. Like, it's always the person that is also unliked by the fans. So there's never an objective view about what the real problem is. Austin Reeves is not your point guard. He is a scorer. I'm sorry, but he's just not. He's not your point guard. There has to be an understanding that he is not the point guard and that D'Lo has actual better control of the game. They're going to have to figure out, and maybe that's when Gabe Vincent comes back, how to have a person in the second unit that controls the actual pace and flow of the game and allows Austin Reeves to be free to move around as a scorer, free to attack without concern of moving the ball or setting up the offense. Pass the ball, get out of the way. That's not really Austin Reeves' game, and you don't want it to be. You want him to be active. We are going to see against OKC if the Lakers learned any lessons about turnovers against, okay, against the Thunder because that's what's going to count. We'll see, y'all. I'm a little nervous, but I'm not tripping too much, and I don't think Laker fans really need to trip too much either. This team hasn't even been together a full season's worth of games. There's going to be some ups and downs, and uh, this is the down. So we'll see how this goes, y'all. Holla at y'all after next game. We out of here like last year. Peace.